Smart automation, better business. Learn how to optimize your business with Solved. Hi, everyone. My name is Dallin, and I'm a senior consultant at Solved. And today we're going to continue our conversation into SPIF. Specifically, how can we get the data that we need to into SPIF? Before you can even get started creating things like commission plans or rules or complicated formulas, it is essential to know that our data is in SPIF and think correctly so that we can create those commission payouts. So whether you're using a CRM like Salesforce or you're using spreadsheets, we will talk about how you can get that data in, how you can look at it, make sure that it's correct and sync regularly that data. So let's hop in. Okay, so we're in SPIF and you'll get here to your homepage right when you log in. And to understand what data sources are feeding SPIF, up here in the navigation bar, you can see there is a data sources tab that we can click on. Once we do that, we'll see the data sources that are feeding the data that we can then use in our commission payouts. Right now, you'll notice that all I have in here are data imports. So they're just Excel spreadsheets that I've put in so that we can do training exercises. But you can also connect your CRM like Salesforce or a, a myriad of other connections that you might look into. So let's start there. The way that you can add a connection and bring that data into Salesforce is by coming to your admin tab up here in navigation and clicking on connectors. Now you can see data imports there. If you need to upload Excel documents and use the Excel documents, very easy to do that. You click upload, it tells you to browse your computer and find those. The other thing that you can connect to is you can notice there are 52 available connectors and you can see things like Amazon S3, Google Sheets, Looker, Monday.com. There's all sorts of things that you can connect to that no matter where your data is housed, you can bring that into SPIF. Specifically, obviously, we're gonna talk about Salesforce and adding Salesforce as a connector. Once you click add a connector with Salesforce specifically, it's gonna take you to the login screen and you can log directly into your Salesforce instance. Once you do that, make sure that the person logging in has system admin access so that the connection happens correctly. So that's connecting Salesforce or any of these other connections. It walks you through a wizard on how to do that, add the connector and it walks you through or you can upload Excel documents as I've done. Once you do that, when you click on data sources, you have your data imports here if you've done Excel documents. If you have connected a different connector, it will show up here as well, and you can work with that data. Let's go now and look in our designer at how we can access that data. So if I open the designer, you'll notice we had worked in our first video in the plans tab, we're actually gonna to come to the data tab over here on the left-hand side. And you can see I have the three tables that I had uploaded, accounts, opportunities, and users. It will look similar with the objects that you choose to sync within Salesforce. And if you need to sync a new object, all that you need to do is you click in that data sources and go and add the object that you need. One thing that's really important when you're working in SPIF is if you add fields that you're not actually using, it can really slow down the processing power that SPIF has. And even if you have tables that you've uploaded from Excel, if you're, you have a bunch of fields that you're not actually using, it, it will really slow down the processing power. So one thing that still, or SPIF recommends is going through and managing those fields. So you can notice here for accounts, for example, I can see that there are uh, fields that are available that I've brought in, but let's say I need to bring in more fields. I can click manage fields and you can see all of the fields available to me here. And if I'm not using a field, I can get rid of it. And if I do need the field, I can add it. So that's how we get our data ends to SPIF. In our next video, we're going to talk about how we can then use that data to start to segment our users in order to use BIF correctly. It's time.
Thank you so much for watching. We can't wait to help you automate your business. Please like, comment, or subscribe for more.